the doggy biscuit was the card drawn off of Kota Bane. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Bruto definitely found, found a good line there. Just wasn't able to get there in time. All right. No, sorry. Keep going. Yeah, you're good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think it uh, it does show that you know the Groat Rogue is a decent bit slower now. Um, obviously, I mean the main issue there was that uh, Bruto found his uh, field contact so late in the game uh, against Hunter, which uh, definitely hurt him a lot. Uh, yeah, but he did get. I mean, he was a. Uh, he was only four off. Hard to say what he could have done differently. I think he definitely took a good line, um, you know, trying to go for multiple cult neophytes, playing playing for board, getting the chip damage in. But yeah, Ban Banter just had uh, a bit too much reach over the top for him. Yeah, so now the Hunter for Banter is through. I think that was a deck that, you know, we expected to get through. Uh, being pretty good into the Warlock, or like being quite good into the Warlock and also good into the, this Burn Shaman, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. So I don't think it really hurts Bruto's chances of winning the match. But I mean, right. it, you know, this, this being THL, every point does matter. So probably not going to be too happy about giving up a point. All right. I think I'm fixed all the stream issues. <laughs> so uh, I don't usually cast on this uh, on the school stone. So I think some of these settings are a little bit different. Um, but hopefully we are all fixed now. And uh, yeah, so we have banter phase up one zero with the hunter win. Uh, any thoughts of what he'll queue next or what brutal will queue next? <clears throat> uh, I would. I would probably expect the Demon Hunter. Um, probably a bit better into the Rogue. Oh, are they already in the game? Yeah, I think... Oh, it's so weird. My Hearthstone did not the, pop the Q or yeah, they immediately going to the next one. <laughs> yeah, my spectator's bugged as well, so I had to, I had to rejoin the match. But yeah, it looks like All we're right. in now. We have the Shaman versus the Rogue. This is a, a pretty interesting one. Um, I know... Always just in time. Uh was was preparing kinda he kinda before the the Garot Rogue or the Octobot nerf specifically, he'd prepared this shaman for his match against Agent PWE. Uh and he basically just called it Armor Shaman, where he had even more like he had the armor vendors along with that that new three drop that uh gives you like five armor if you have a frost spell in your hand. And he basically just got to 60 health, and then Pee-wee couldn't do anything. Um, now this this deck doesn't have that, whatever that three drop is called. But I could also definitely see uh, the shaman, you know, going for a Bolner turn with Armor Vendor, and then playing a bunch of Battle Cries, and then just getting out of range of the Garo Rogue's damage forever. Uh, I don't know how feasible that is because I haven't played this matchup too much lately. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting line since Garo definitely has much more um much more limited in terms of its damage potential now. Yeah, and you do also have to be careful. Uh I think on your field contact turns, you know, you have to worry about playing maybe too many minions. Uh because you can actually just die from a snowfall guardian coming down, you know, like if a Snowfall Guardian gets bloomed out on four or something, you've played a bunch of minions with field contact, you could just get board locked and then uh, next turn your opponent plays Macaw, freezes your board again, and then suddenly you have like some a few 10 attack minions hitting your face and you're just dead. So I think the like the Garut Rogue definitely has a lot to worry about and has has to play around a lot of different things, uh, including the Mutinous, which is also in the deck for McBannerface. So here, do you think that the Garut Rogue, um, like, what is the role here? Are we seeing the Garut Rogue basically play a more um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Control role. Basically, you're just trying to get that combo in line. Should the warlock, should the shaman be trying to pressure? Yeah, I think the shaman definitely has to pressure to some extent. Uh, I don't think you can bank on. I don't think you can bank on just gaining a bunch of armor and outliving them every single game because you know there isn't that much draw on the deck and you won't be able to find that armor to gain every time. So I think you definitely have to try to put on some sort of pressure, either through, you know, an early wild paw cavern, which we haven't, you know, which we haven't seen just yet. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can just kind of wait around and wait for the garrote, garrote rogue to try to combo you. I think you have to put some sort of initiative on board. Yeah, it doesn't seem like. Um, do you think he is saving up for some kind of armor line? I guess that you can always play it by ear too, based on um, the tools you have. But it does seem like McVanderface has, you know, all, all the tools in some sense, right? He can take a lot of different lines here. Yeah, I think holding the armor vendor was also uh, because he didn't want to play into a tempo octobot um, and just have like a minion stuck on board like that. Hmm, so yeah. I think that, that was also part of his reasoning. Um, but yeah, also, I think there was also definitely the line where you want to save your armor vendor for a Bolner turn and you're able to, you know, play all your battle cries out and, yeah, gain a ton of armor to get out of range. Yeah, it's like the flexibility he has basically with the parrots, right? Um, it's going to be interesting how he decides to use that, what battle cries he's looking for with that, along with the Bolner, of course, but. Because basically here you can either go for some kind of freeze play later on after the Garot row kind of goes off, or you can go for some kind of armor play to try to get out of range. But this is the turn, I guess, that Bruto's going to pop off a bit. Yeah, and this is the turn you really have to be wary about your, your board size here. Um, I mean, the Snowfall Guardian is in the hand from Banner, so if Bruto goes a bit too wide here, it could be a pretty big problem for him. Uh, he is doing a pretty good job here of, uh, you know, playing the swindle instead of, you know, dropping the cult in the fight and the prize plunder. I think he, he definitely recognizes that he needs to not go too, too wide here to play into a, a really big uh, Snowfall Guardian. Yeah, and even leaving that Penflinger there, because um, he just doesn't really need it in this matchup or in uh you know with based on what his hand is you know he's got plenty of cards plenty of uh ways to draw more and uh to get down to down get his deck down so he definitely wants the hand space yeah i i think uh I, I think this was the uh the best way he could have gone about uh, a contact turn here um yeah i don't think the the pen flinger is super necessary and you've kind of forced out a really slow turn from Banty here. He's not able to really develop that much. Um, had to spend half his mana just removing the contact. Yeah, it is pretty interesting that like this hand space issue is going to be a real issue. Um, just because what does he play here? <laughs> you could play Cutlass and Shroud here right. and then just let your Penflinger die when it tries to bounce back to your hand. I think that might be the play. Still doesn't let you play Octobot if you draw it. Um, so yeah, the nerf's coming a little bit into play here. Interesting. Might be looking at a contact. Yeah, here, another contact. So just going to draw cards that way, I guess, instead of the Shroud. So maybe the Shroud never gets played. Yeah, we might not see a second. Uh, the Shroud come down um, at all this game. Depends. He is starting this combo or this this contact turn a bit late in the turn. I think we might not see him get all the actions out that he wants to. But he does pick up the, the neophyte, which we might see here. He could also save it, but okay, goes down. But yeah. This does play into the freeze turns, but I guess you want to not leave that contact up, right? Yeah, although he does have this turn, I think it's a, a little bit better because 
if you do go for a snowfall garden, you can just scabs and uh, you're getting your field contact back, which is pretty good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like you don't really, uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> so, I mean, Brutus kind of set up a like a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation where, you know, Banter's maybe his only decent play here is to go for the Snowfall Guardian, but if he does that, he's still not in a great spot anyways. Still so six cards left in deck for Brudo, so I don't think Banter's worried to, too worried about dying next turn. Um, you know, we haven't, like, we had the Octo discount earlier in the game, but uh, there's only one card left that was actually hit by that discount. Right. Or maybe it was hit by... Oh, was the Cutlass traded or not? No, the Cutlass wasn't traded, so yeah, it was Octo discount. But yeah, but in any case, not very discounted hand. And yeah, he was going to play the Snowfall Guardian here. So what's the play here? He's just dumping cards. Oh, okay, cards. he might just keep drawing. Oh, okay. I think this is a very interesting turn just because, yeah, like he's he left the contact up, so you can definitely draw through the rest of your deck. Yeah, he is going to have hand space issues again, but right. none of the cards left in the deck, uh, aside from the Octobot, are too impactful. Seems like uh, also he has to consider board space potential issues. If he just freezes this board over and over, is there ever a situation where he's just going to like draw himself dead to fatigue before he can actually do the combo with enough? Like he has to kill some of this stuff, doesn't he? How many spaces does he need? Uh, I find it. I, I think it's pretty likely that he's going to have to play scabs before getting a combo off at some point anyways. Mm, okay. Um, so I would have. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh, the Octo got burned. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Um, I mean, I don't think you, if you play Scabs next turn, you def you probably won't need it. Like, you won't need the Octo discount because the uh, the Scabs discount on on like already on nine mana, you are already have a lot of leeway. But I think uh, with the Scabs discount as well, effectively giving you eleven mana, you're not going to need the Octo. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting kind of situation <laughs> like what is the line too for now big mcbanfer's with big banter face to go for here like do you just leave things the way they are and you continue to freeze do you go for an armor play of some kind although i guess you can't with leaving everything on the board right yeah it is interesting i think like is it possible that uh so can banter or sorry can banter die here uh so if you play a guild trader, garrote, garrote, and ethereal next turn. Uh, that'll be twenty-eight damage, I believe, because the first two garrotes won't have the extra spell damage. Right. Um. So I think he, yeah, he is. Okay. He is just dead here. Oh no, never mind. Goes the, up to twenty nine with the yeah life steal. The contact's dead now. So and now the contact's anymore. dead, right? But he still has. Okay, how much mana does he have? Enough mana to? No, he doesn't. No, he does. He's one man off being able to trade away the uh, the cutlass to draw all the garrotes, Unfortunately. So I believe he does have to go for a, a scabs here, which kind of does leave him open to a big, uh, Bolner armor turn. Yeah. And then at that point now, it seems like the the line is a little more clear for McBanterface, where he's basically just trying to survive, right? Like, that's all you're doing at this point. Yeah, I think now you're just trying to gain as much life as possible. You win by fatigue. And these two, these two uh, the shadows, are, are definitely a, bit, a problem as well right now. Right. Yeah, I yeah. guess you just swing the face damage. with the. I guess you just swing face with the gavel and and pray here. 
no way to freeze these guys? You could freeze. Oh, but, but then I you're think... dead to the combo, right? Yeah. Um, you could freeze and like armor vendor, I guess. But there's a large he's, amount he's of armor. He's gaining a ton of armor here, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, especially with the macabre, uh, like, uh, also giving you the four armor from the battle cry itself, along with the boulder effect. Right. He still has more battle cries as well, so. Um. Yeah, I would. This primal engineer is going to draw us. Uh, if it does draw a nature spell, it'll draw the second Snowfall Guardian, which won't, isn't really useful. Uh, it's both the Sleep Breakers were already played, so it, it's not too effective. So it doesn't really make it too much of a difference between the Circus Medic and the Dungeoneer in terms of armor, but getting the extra draw could be useful. I'm sure Bruto this entire time has been doing the map <laughs> in terms yeah, of exactly what his range is. The question is, if you if you don't have the lethal, is there some alternative? Okay, he's going for it though, right? Um, so he like. has thirty six here with with the two ethereals and the guild trader. So then, plus the eights from the board. Yeah, so that puts him up to, uh, yeah, pl plus the two from the weapon, so that puts him up to forty six damage. It's he's one actually off. one damage off lethal. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow, that is crazy. But I guess you still go for it, right? There's, I there's no other so. line that wins the game, just, right? Yeah, I think you want to just put stuff on board. I would definitely be uh, maybe killing off this Bolner too right. as well with this. He's got the prize plunder, plunder exactly to do that. He's got to go. These Garoda, and, I mean, he can just queue up all the actions, I guess. So yeah, it, it looks like he's got them all in. It, I think, <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah, it is gonna, it's gonna take forever to tell because Garota animations are so slow. But it looks like he got everything off. Man, that it, is... it looks like he was just gonna send all face and pray that there's no, there's no, taunt or heal. But there is the tail and forging, which is gonna let him uh, block the second weapon swing. Yeah, but oh, and can sorry, he... he was what. One man off playing the prize oh, plunder. Oh, he couldn't here. play the prize plunder. That's right. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I think that is just gonna do it for this game. I don't really see how. I don't think Bruto can win now. Yeah. Um, I do. So he seems like that way, right? Because just the taunt. You clear the board with your minions, and then you play the taunt. Oh. Uh. Does he not need to clear the board? I, I might be missing something here. <laughs> just... Oh, he could just play Snowfall Guardian and Viper if he wants to. But he... Oh, but... Oh, right, right, right. Because Scabs doesn't have... Yeah, 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 of course. So this yeah. is essentially... Yeah, that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Because he drew Viper, right? Yeah. This ends the game faster, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and you have the dunk tank to clear off all the minions next turn. Right. Yeah, I don't see how Bruto wins from this position. Crazy that he's at one. <laughs> yeah, incredibly close. What should I order? Yeah, I think there were, I mean, I think there were like, I don't know, 10 different plays there that involved winning the game for banter. Uh, so I don't, I don't think... It was uh like it mattered too much what he played. Right. All very impressive. Uh I'm just trying to think back to all the plays, uh the little plays that McBanter uh had to make. You know, even not playing things, for example, right, to get to that position. Yeah, I think uh, holding on to the armor vendor. I mean, he had the the Bolner in hand, 
pretty early on into the game, so I think he, his uh, his plan was definitely to go for a, a bull in their armor vendor turn at some right. point. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, it definitely paid off really well for him. This is kind of one of those matchups that's interesting to watch, too, since I never play this matchup <laughs> anymore, at least, right? Like, I never really see or play this matchup anymore, so it's it's kind of cool to see these two players navigate uh, a kind of rare, uh, more rare matchup anyway now on on uh, ladder. Yeah, and I think it's it's definitely interesting from both sides. Um, like, I think, obviously, everyone knows that Garot Rogue is a pretty tough deck to play, but I think from the... From the other end, the the shaman. I think there's a lot of a lot of decision making a, as we saw that game. Um, Banter had to make uh, a lot of interesting decisions there about what you know how to go about winning the game. And I think he, I don't know. I think he made pretty much all the right decisions from what we saw. Definitely. So we are into the third game now with McBanter face up 2-0. He is playing the Demon Hunter. This last deck fell DH, and Bruto is going still with the Groat Rogue. I, I am getting that spectator thing where after every game it's just kicking me out. So <laughs> yeah, I had to respectate as well. Bruto with a pretty solid hand to start the game um, has the or had the double cutlass and the uh, passage picked up an octobot as well and the field contact. Wow, this is I mean almost as good as you can ask for. Yeah, gonna get definitely. to probably passage on three into an octo turn, I would imagine. Generally, you want to be passaging with three mana to spare as Garot Rogue, or, or or more, of course. But I think three mana is generally the minimum. Yeah, that way you can basically draw into your minions, right? Some of the key cards cost three mana, so... Do you think he rips it here? I guess that's... I would expect so, yeah. Best play, right? Yeah. Nothing else really going on. Oh, he does find Shroud. Yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty much the best pickup you you could have gotten there. Um, you know, with the Octobot in hand, you just want to get more uh, contact fodder in your hand before you discount everything. So the Fel DH also, I mean, has a reasonable hand. He's got some draw engine. He has the Kurtris card, which is, you know, uh, one of the two possible win conditions i suppose right between the jace and um the combo yeah i'm a little surprised not to see banterface at least you know look for a glide through studies here i think mm. um after seeing that you just saw the passage and the shroud there's definitely uh I think it was definitely reasonable to at least look for it. And then if you don't hit the glide, you can always just play Chaos Strike and Hero Power. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm a little surprised to not see him go for it, but he could also be waiting for an Octobot discount before gliding. Right. That's, I think is, is that maybe sounds the, reasonable. the reasoning there. Right, that sounds very reasonable. Like, because uh, it resets the discount, um, if I believe correctly, right? So. Yeah, yeah, all the cards that get shuffled back lose their discount. Except, I think, tradable minions. I think they keep the discount, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting. Even from, like, an um, Octobot. That's interesting. Yeah, I believe so. It's it's kind of like the... I mean, if you uh, remember, like, with, with OTKDH, um, you know, if you continue to trade tradable minions with the Kurtris right. effect on board, they, they continue to get discounted. Mm -hmm. So do you think he searches for the glide here? Uh, I would expect to at least, yeah, to see the studies looking I mean, for a glide yeah. here. He even and stepped And he hits it. Oh, nice. He it. <laughs> even to step the Octobot there, right? Like, that's pretty huge. Yeah, yes. Burning a Shadow Step uh, and an Octo Discount is pretty huge. Yikes. And also just, you know, forcing a ton like a ton of cards back into Bruto's deck. Right. He just got uh, a reasonable amount of draw. Well, he does get a shroud back, so. Yeah, this does, it still definitely slows him down significantly though. Cause For sure. you, you can probably, if you get contact off of the shroud, you can probably go for a shroud or a contact next turn. 
but he doesn't hit it. And now his hand is looking pretty dead. You have the yeah. guild trader for one redraw, but that's it. Yeah, nothing great. And I, I mean, yeah, there's no no contact this turn, and Banter's just gonna get to skull. Look for oh, that is a great runner runner draw though. <laughs> Hit yeah, the octobot, gets the field contact. Can discount this turn if he wants. His hand is still a little low on resources. I think he's gonna he's gonna need to find something like a a swindle off of those first couple of draws if he really wants. Oh, this is interesting. He's kind of. Oh, yeah, I thought he was gonna a, save it. Uh, I think this is. Uh, Just I think this skull? is a really good play by Bruto, though. I think you can't afford to allow an outcasted skull to come out and. And he top decked <laughs> Panther it. Panther top decked the other skull and. Out, <laughs> right. <laughs> which I mean, I think uh, playing for disruption is definitely a good idea here. It's very interesting. Yeah, no, it's very interesting because if you looked at um, Banter's hand before that disruption too, it wasn't, it wasn't great. <laughs> it's got two spell buffs and a skull. Uh, oh, I guess the skull is in the right position. No, he top decks the. Yeah, so I guess that. Yeah, that he was top decked the really skull key. on six. So he did have skull on six there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it upside down. I know on the stream it's right side up. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, this Ooh. is interesting. I think. Uh, I think Kurtris is definitely the move here, just to take away the this discount right? yeah, from the Octo. Oh, nope, he's going to school. He does pick up the Fury. I wonder if he's... I wonder if he's actually going to go for killing the Octo here. I could see him... I could definitely see him not go for it now, because I think he maybe doesn't care about the Octo right. discount. It looks like he could just be trying to push lethal, right? He's got the discounted Jace as well. Yeah, okay, I so think he doesn't... we might see, you know, a huge burst of damage next right. turn with the a fury, the double fury Jace. Yeah, I haven't been keeping close ca uh, count. I've seen at least the chaos strike. And this is, this, is this the second fury or the first? This is the first, right? This is the first. Yeah. So he doesn't. He definitely doesn't have enough to kill right. Brudo next turn, but he will get an ammo back from this Jace. Mm -hmm. So it is going to clear off this entire board, and he's going to get to push a bunch of damage face. And also heal up with the Warblades. And both contacts are on the table now, so... Yeah, pretty of a bit of a rough spot for the Rogue. Oh, the Swindle pickup is huge, though. Yeah. This is a pretty, I mean, I can see how, why, in some sense, McBannerface just didn't really care that much about the uh, discounts, because it's just a, such a tough position. You're basically, what, three turns behind now, just because of the glide? Maybe more. Yeah, you're, you're just so far back. Even with some pretty reasonable draws, um, I mean, he is digging pretty hard into the deck here. Yeah, he is getting really, really close. He did get the passage off at the end, I think, just to get it out of the hand. Yeah, just to burn it. He has five cards left in deck, so he, he did get really close to the end here. It basically forces Banter to... I mean, he's going to clear the board with Jace if he wants it. And that is a bit unfortunate for, for Bruto there. He's sort of running out of time on his turn. Does Feller Barrage have any out and any possibility of a lethal? Um, I don't 18. think so. So the Fury is three plus two no, from the yeah. weapon. So it's, it's not... 10 from the attack plus the hero power. So yeah, the, the Fell Barrage doesn't really change yeah. the whether it's lethal or not, but it will push a little bit more damage, which is nice. Uh, if the if the MO comes down first, that is. Right. And it does. All right. Well, you know, it feels like in this matchup, each player has been forcing the other one to kind of 
have something, <laughs> right? In that situation, it was like, look, you, you got to clear the board and have something. Otherwise, I might OTK you next turn. Uh, here, it's basically the other way around, right? Yeah, um, I I mean, I think Banner has been, uh, I think they've both been taking some really good lines, um, but I really, I, like looking back on it, I really like his, his skull play on seven there as opposed right. to going for the Kurtris. Like obviously right. my gut reaction was just to kill the Octobot, but um, yeah, in hindsight, it was definitely definitely not that impactful yeah. leaving it up. Yeah, it definitely makes sense given the state of the Garot Rogue, right? Like you just shuffled in all his cards, like he doesn't have discounts, he doesn't have setup. He kind of there's just a recognition that even with that discount, you're gonna need some time to build back up. But Bruto did it incredibly fast fashion with that double uh contact play. Yeah, no, he was he was really close there. I think um you could have maybe said that he sort of had to go for prep swindle at the end of last turn and just pray he didn't burn a combo piece hmm. um it was i mean it was somewhat likely that he i think he would have he was at nine cards was he oh no he was at 10 so he would have burned two cards if he went for the prep swindle but i think that was like that was like maybe the only way he would have potentially had lethal this turn and i think he kind of needed it well, Banter's got the lethal here with Kurtris. Yeah, it is. It is like a really tough thing to see, but you're also on three health. Or, or I guess you didn't know you were gonna go down that hard much because you're at 18. It's tough to see the, you know, the the Jace off of Skull with the Fury still in hand. So I definitely don't blame Bruto for not not going for that. But I think that was maybe the only way he could have won. At least at that point in the game. Right, yeah. Let's see if we can get him in for an interview. I know he was feeling sick this morning, so we'll see how he's feeling. But that's a 3-0 sweep for McBanderface then. So... And, I mean, taking down a player like Bruto <laughs> in a in such a convincing fashion is is pretty impressive, you know. Uh, almost like this McBanderface guy has played at a world championship or something. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think it was uh, good. I mean, pretty excellent play from both sides. Um, you could, so you could maybe say that uh, the preparation was a little bit in Banter's favor. I know. Uh, I remember. I think it was Base that was talking about how you know their their team discusses a lot about lineups and they're all they're all talking a lot. You know about each other's matches so i think that, uh there was definitely a lot of help for for banter there or maybe not but i think uh banter definitely got some help from his team on his lineup and i think it showed yeah let's see if we can get him in here All right. Hello. Can you hear us okay? Mm, you, yeah. You guys here, right? Super, super chain. You're still here. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah, there you go. Hey, big banner face. Give me one sec. Sure, go ahead. Up. I can't hear you guys. You guys can hear super chicken. You can hear me though, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. All you. right, just making sure. <laughs> I'm like using a. I'm using Lotus's uh, setup here, which is why like nothing was configured. I thought it was configured. It looked configured, and then in game one, we quickly found out that things were not configured. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm good now. I can hear you. Cool. Hey, thanks for joining us for the interview. Uh, great matches. Congratulations, first of all, on the 3-0 sweep against a very uh, a, a top one opponent currently. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anything stand out to you? Like, it seemed like you navigated um, these Garot 
matches really well um even though it feels like at least to me these are not necessarily like the well at least i don't play garot rogue much on ladder anymore um i don't know how you felt about it in particular the matchups and the lines that you were thinking about uh how you felt navigating against garot rogue yeah I, this particular meta i haven't played much in because i kind of took a, a bit of a break after world so i'm still getting back into it now but like most of the decks that I'm playing were in the game before. Maybe not Feld DH, it wasn't super popular, but all the other decks, you know, like I've played the matchups before and I played them a ton to practice for Worlds. And uh, I've also played, I mean, hundreds of games on Rogue. So like I know the deck like the back of my hand and I know what my opponent wants to do in pretty much every turn. So I kind of just use that knowledge to help navigate it. And there are definitely some tough games in there, some weird moments, but. Yeah, I felt pretty comfortable playing against it. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, because you know the rogue perspective, certainly, right? So you can kind of imagine it based on the matchup and what you know about the uh, decks you're playing. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to ask about how you're feeling about the meta, you know, post patch in general. I guess you're just getting back into it now. Do you have any thoughts on how it's been now versus before the patch? Yeah, I definitely don't have enough games to have a super strong opinion on it, but I like some of the decks that are in. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that Rogue might be a bit of an issue. Like, most of the Rogue decks are just better than everything else, but there are a lot of viable classes. Um, I'm also doing some prep for the Max League of Nations tournament, and, like, we need to have nine different classes in it. And I was looking through, and I was like, hey, they're actually good decks for just about nine classes maybe eight which is pretty cool and it's not super common in any meta i think usually there's a few classes that are clearly better than others so there's a lot of diversity which is nice and i think it leaves a lot of room for you know other decks to perform well especially if rogue does end up getting nerfed then i think it'll be a very competitive meta for all the classes yeah so you, you are you are kind of in on the the rogue nerf it sounds like you are kind of hoping that that happens soon yeah, I mean, I love Rogue. It's it's my favorite class, so I like playing it. But I think it's pretty clear that it's a power outlier right now. Like, there are two Rogue decks that are pretty arguably the two best decks in the game by a good margin. Um, I would argue that. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing it nerfed. And I think that uh, everything else seems pretty good to me. I'm not sure if that many nerfs are needed. It's probably just Rogue. What would you do to it, I guess? And... Uh... So your thought is that if we just turn tone down rogue alone, then basically the meta will be fine. Like all the decks will still be viable, I suppose, right across the board. Yeah, I mean, I haven't given it too much thought. I'm not sure exactly what you know repercussions that could have. Maybe you know handlock becomes good, too good, or beastrude becomes too good, something like that. But it's definitely the one that comes to mind. I would probably just nerf Noel to start, and I would definitely nerf Scabs. I think if you hit those two cards, you hit the two best rogue decks. Um, Scabs is definitely a broken card. I think everyone can agree on that. Mm. It's just way too strong for what it does. Uh, I'd put that to eight mana probably and nerf Null by a mana or maybe change the card text a little. And then I think it'll be uh, pretty fair and competitive. Thanks. So Richard, any questions? <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, I mean, congrats on the win. Um, so. I know you joined, this is a new THL team for you. Um, you know, you're playing with Hype Horizon for a few seasons now. How has the, the change been for you? How has the, has the team environment been different at all? Uh, yeah, it has been a bit different. I mean, with Hype Horizon, it was a bunch of like really strong players, but we didn't necessarily pay like too much attention to THL. We were often pretty busy with other stuff. So we didn't really ever talk about lineups or anything. Whereas there's definitely more like THL specific interaction with the new team, which is nice. Um, you know, it's cool to have some extra talk about lineups and stuff. We did that in another group, but it wasn't necessarily THL related. So, you know, especially now for me, when I'm not familiar with the meta, which is kind of unusual, I, uh, you know, I have a team that can help me out and tell me which decks are good and all that. So yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice help. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting thing, you know, like coming from GM, like you're playing at the highest level of Hearthstone, competitive Hearthstone right now, right? And then mm -hmm. you're playing in this like small community, <laughs> relatively speaking, at least. I mean, obviously there's a lot of good players in the community, but 
uh, what do you feel like you get or benefit from? Like, what do you enjoy, I suppose, about being part of THL? That's like maybe some, something different from kind of the highest level of competition that you're usually uh, in. Uh, I mean, I just like competing in general. So any extra competition I can get is pretty fun. And especially, you know, THL, it's a more like more relaxed vibe while still being competitive. And I can still get some really good practice. Like you said, there are some really, really good players in the league, you know, several GMs, some, you know, players that could be GMs for sure. Uh, I include Bruto among that group. So, you know, in the first like three weeks, I've already faced three really good players. Um, which is it's nice it's a good bit of practice and uh get to brush up on my my meta skills and all that nice <clears throat> any other questions for you super chicken um yeah i think that was pretty much it for me yeah i just wanted to say yeah congrats on your win and yeah, good luck in your future matches thank you appreciate it cool yeah thanks for being on and thanks for letting us uh stream your match it was awesome of course yeah, hope you enjoyed it all right bye all right. Well, that's uh, a short Saturday school stone for us today. We just had this one match, but a hype one, obviously, and uh, some really high level play uh, with, you know, um, very high skill decks too. Uh, you know, getting to see the Groat Rogue three times and getting them, getting both players to see them navigate um, somewhat different, uh, so many different potential lines, right? Very, very cool. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really definitely really interesting um i think the groat i think groat rogue is always interesting to watch i think it gives i think it gives a lot of play from the other side i think more than a lot of people would think so i think we got some some really interesting uh or so, sorry some really interesting games to see in this match uh and a lot of excellent play from both sides yeah, even though it was a 3-0, it just felt like Rudo was playing great. I mean, every all, all his lines and and the the really com the high level of complexity, I think, of so much of that uh play and yet he, you know, was able to pull off and uh these really really navigate these really kind of tough situations. It was very impressive. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. And I believe we have Oh yeah, we have another uh Saturday match on stream. It's uh, tonight at 8 Eastern. It's always just in time versus Genji in Hero Series, uh, which I will be casting with Nice Jewish Owl. So nice. yeah, be sure, to, be sure to check out that match at 8 p.m. EST tonight. Nice. All right. Well, that's all for us then. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for living through some of the stream issues. Super Chicken, you were great just taking over because <laughs> there's like, oh, I don't, I don't, I can't get the capture to go right. The sound, I, I thought the sound was coming through, but then uh, it was not coming through for a portion there. So, but uh, we at least got the last two matches there cleanly in the interview. So that's nice. Yeah, okay, it'll be fine tonight, we promise. <laughs> yes, you won't have me <laughs> trying to navigate Lotus's uh, setup here, so <laughs> that, yeah, that'll I mean, be good. Uh, stream opping and, and casting, well, stream opping's tough enough as it is. I think having to, trying to cast at the same time is uh, is a lot to do, so I think... You know, I think you had your, your hands full and you did a good job with it. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Is is nice to us owl OPing? Is is that or are you OPing? Uh, I think Saku is so oh, Saku we're, is. we're nice. good there. So you got a I got a proper proper full team there. <laughs> a devoted yeah. OP and two casters. Yeah, That's we... awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. Uh and uh we'll play ourselves out. I hear you got a problem. Ha 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 ha!